All right, guys, what's going on? My name is Dan. Today, I wanted to talk about five must-have tools as a carpenter. So if you're an apprentice or if you just love carpentry, these are some things that are gonna be really handy to have. Now, we're sort of ranging from super cheap to super expensive, but all of these items are going to make you a more efficient and better carpenter. Now, this is just my opinion. I'm sure everybody has their own lists. But to me, if you're an apprentice and you start building a kit out, having all of this in it is gonna be a big plus for your potential employer. All right, so number one is the nail bag. Most of you guys have seen mine. I've made a video about it. I will link it below. I'm currently using a buckaroo nail bag. I've got two separate pouches and a couple of different frogs, which is holding a huge array of tools. Now, carrying these things can be a bit of a pain. I'm still unsure whether it's making me stronger or whether it's giving me like long-term like back problems time will tell but these things are so convenient it saves you a lot of time from going back and forth to the car because you need a combination square or you need a fourfold you need a couple of drill bits having the ability to carry that on you at all times is a massive time saver and if you're a smoker you got an ashtray strapped to your waist at all times I mean how good is that but yeah the nail bag it is it is a must have for every carpenter, in my opinion. They just give you the ability to get a perfect cut on site. And that's kind of a game changer for anyone that's had to cut down doors with a circular saw, and then you try and cut down a door with a track saw. You really can't compare the two. I like to think I'm pretty good with the circular saw. I feel like I get a pretty good cut, but the track saw is just a whole other level. Now, I know they say tools don't really make you a good carpenter, but this kind of does. Whether you're cutting doors, trimming decks, breaking down sheet material like ply or MDF, the track saw is a godsend. Mwah. Back in the day, we used to use a level and a couple of clamps, and you'd be forever measuring from, the, uh, from your base plate into the blade. Make sure you set the level the right distance back and it's just a fuck around. Just not necessary. Track saw just cuts bang on your line every single time. So good. It's a bit of an investment, but worth it in my opinion. Now the speed square. This is on the cheap end of the list. There's a reason why you see basically every carpenter carry one of these. They are so good. They are so cheap, super versatile. You can work out your angles if you're cutting in roofs. Now these are fairly compact, easy to carry around with you. Uh, depending on which one you get, you also have cutouts in five millimeter increments for marking rip cuts. And you can also use them as a cross-cut guide for your circular saw to make sure it's nice and square. Now, speaking of circular saws, that is my fourth item on the list. Now, these can be had for pretty cheap. You can pick up a little Makita one for like 100 bucks Australian. In my opinion, this is a must-have as a chippy. You don't really need a track saw. You can get by without it. You'll be better if you have one, but but a circular saw is a must have. Whether you're a DIY or you are a carpenter by trade or even a landscaper, you need to have a circular saw in the kit. This is probably my most used power tool on site. I'm currently using this Bosch 18 volt circular saw. Probably been about 12 months since I've used a corded one. The battery ones are just so good these days, but, but the consistent power of the corded version still does make it a very good option. And if you're DIY and you don't want to spend huge bucks on a whole battery system, a corded circular saw is really a no-brainer. And number five, this is really on the high end of things. I don't even know if you'd call it a tool, but basically a toolbox on wheels. I'm talking about the work vehicle. In Australia, we call them utes utility vehicles. 
I know other parts of the world, vans are super popular due to wet weather, pickup trucks in America. Anyway, it's all the same thing. It's basically your toolkit on wheels. Getting yourself set up with a work vehicle is going to make you stand out from the crowd. It shows that you have your shit together. If you have your own wheels and your own tools, you're gonna find a job like that. Now, I know this isn't technically a tool, but this is what enables me to work efficiently. This is my current setup. I'm driving a Mazda BT50, I think it's a 2019. I've currently got two aluminum boxes on the back one with the drawers and one is just a wide open lid. I've got a trundle drawer and a couple of undermount toolboxes as well. I originally wanted to keep the middle of this tray open for things like wheelbarrows, cement mixers, but now I'm thinking I really need to pick up a full aluminum canopy so I can set the ute out properly. I just have so many tools that I'm not really fitting them into these toolboxes that I currently have and I just want to be able to carry everything with me all the time. It's always that one tool that you leave at home that you need on site. But for now, this is what I've got and it does do what I need it to do. This enables me to have the family in the front and the tools in the back. So it really is an all round vehicle. So that's it. That's the five items that if I were getting into the trade, that's what I would be working towards. Love to hear your thoughts. What do you guys have in your top five? Let me know in the comments below. Let's connect on Instagram too. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.